Hello and uh, welcome to today's academic breakout session. Uh, my name is Steve Vitito. I'm Assistant Vice President for Enrollment at John Carroll University. And today's session is going to cover the Physics and Engineering Physics Department at John Carroll University. Uh, you're going to hear from uh, a few of our faculty members in the department as well as uh, students majoring in the in the department and a current uh, or recent John Carroll alum and you're going to hear about the different opportunities um, in our programs through the department uh, some of the things our students get to be involved in and experience uh, and where our students go when they graduate with uh, physics and engineering physics degree from John Carroll University to start things off, I'd like to introduce Dr. Jeff Dick. He is the professor and chair of the physics department who will lead you through the presentation today. Uh, and I will turn it over to Dr. Dick. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, welcome everybody out there in uh, virtual land. Um, this, uh, I hope this is a productive uh, time for you. Uh, we'll, we miss having you here in person, but uh, I'm really glad you've joined us. So just for a quick overview of the physics department, um, some of the distinguishing features include the small size, uh, flexible degree offerings, um, unique curriculum. We have a strong focus on advising, um, strong connections to alumni, and we uh, have a required senior capstone research or design project for our students. And I'll, I'll be talking more about each of these um, things in some detail throughout this presentation. Um, first of all, about the department, um, we're made up of four uh, tenure track faculty um, and graduate about eight to 10 graduates per year, um, which means that we uh, can get a lot of um, contact with our students and we get to know each other. The student group uh, is very cohesive and uh, they get to know each other well and stay in contact after they graduate. Um, we think that we have a really great atmosphere here. And so I think um, to, to do a little bit of introduction, we are joined with um, our full-time members of the department. Um, and I'm gonna um, ask each of them in turn to just introduce themselves. We also have a couple of current students and one alum member. So um, maybe you can wave uh, when I introduce you. Uh, well, first of all, there's Steve. Do um, um, you wanna, okay. And then uh, we have uh, Navid Paracha. Uh, Danielle Kara, um, Dinesh Shetty. These are our full-time faculty members of the department. And then two students, um, a rising junior, Alec Kutras, and graduating senior, currently a senior, Gru Winsky, and a recent um, alum, um, Spencer Furin. Okay, so um, first of all, a little about myself. I've been at John Carroll a little over 15 years, and I um, have been chair now for, I guess, maybe five or six years. And um, I have a research specialty in condensed matter physics, which um, has me focusing on um, novel materials for energy applications. And so this is a very applied area. It's experimental, and I really enjoy working with students. Um, on the teaching side, I've uh, developed a lot of laboratory activities and, and courses, and um, I really enjoy teaching the advanced lab um, and senior lab course, um, and I'm currently teaching the intro uh, sequence for physics, intended physics majors and engineering majors. Um, and so if you come to John Carroll, uh, you'll have me as one of your first professors. Um, so maybe we can go to Dr. Paracha. Uh, you're, you're muted. Okay, hello, uh, I am Navid Paracha. Uh, I have been uh, with John Carroll for around 18 years. Uh, I do research in the field of experimental laser spectroscopy and, uh, and I study uh, atomic and molecular structure. Uh, I have taught a wide variety of courses, including general physics, modern physics, electronics, and, electronic, uh, uh, and electrical circuits. Uh, Recently, I'm teaching how things work. Uh, this is a linked course and is coupled with an entrepreneur cl class on cre uh, creativity and idea development. Okay, great. And let's hear from Dr. Kara. Hi, I'm 
Danielle Cara. I'm a relatively new faculty member here at John Carroll. I've been here about two years now. And my research primarily focuses on medical imaging and also medical diagnostics. So I've done a good bit with MRI and I'm also working now with a new tabletop detector. Um, so a lot of my research deals with electric and magnetic fields. And so I love teaching electricity and magnetism. I also really have enjoyed getting to know the pre-meds, which probably may not be you if you're looking at this video, but perhaps it is. So um, I really have enjoyed uh, working with them as well. And a, a lot of my research also deals with computational physics. So this year I got to teach a numerical physics course, which was really a lot of fun. So I hope to see you soon. Okay, Dr. Shetty. Hi, uh, I'm Dinesh Shetty. Uh, I've been teaching physics for about eight to nine years now. Uh, this is my second semester at John Carroll University. Uh, I, I like teaching uh, lower and upper level physics uh, class. Uh, for instance, this semester, I've been teaching an astronomy class and a general physics class and an upper level class in classical mechanics. Uh, on the research side, uh, my research interest is in the area of nuclear physics. Uh, where I study collisions between two atomic nuclei uh, uh, in order to study reactions that happens in stars. Uh, I'm also interested in applied aspect of nuclear physics, uh, where, um, which involves um, the uh, nuclear radiation detection in areas such as uh, nuclear energy, radiological science, and in the area of medical physics as well. So I'm looking forward to some of our new students um, uh, next semester. Thank you. Okay, and we'll hear from the students after a little while. I want to give a, a, a broad overview of the department and hit on some highlights, and then we will um, get back to them in a little bit. Okay, so um, I'm going to tell you about our flexible degree offerings. Um, our, our unique curriculum, and you've already heard a little bit about, we are generally pretty experimentally focused, um, but also have an expertise in computation, and both of those things are an important part of our curriculum. Um, as far as academic advising, um, because of our uh, great student to faculty ratio, we, we can put a lot of attention on students, and we really focus on meeting students where they are, and finding what are their strengths, and what uh, and their interests and and getting them down the, uh, a really effective road for them. Um, we also have um, a focus on career development and career discernment um, and was one we were one of the first departments to develop uh, basically a professional development program for our majors in what we call the physics seminar where we bring in alumni um, and um, hear from outside speakers, uh, work on resume preparation, um, and on, you know, what do people with a physics major or engineering physics major do out there in the real world? We have really strong connections to our alums. Um, we have well-funded uh, endowed scholarships, um, enabling us to, to offer lots of scholarships to students. Um, they help us facilitate internships. Um, they come back and talk to um, our students, uh, sharing their stories and giving them advice. And they participate in our annual banquet where we recognize our graduating seniors. We had to cancel that this year, but we're really pleased that we figured out how to do this in a virtual uh, mode through Zoom, just like this. So we're gonna be hopefully making lots of connections to alums actually much farther away from the Cleveland area this year. Um, then uh, the senior capstone is a requirement of all students at John Carroll, but with fact, uh, with uh, uh, in the physics department, we focus on uh, individualized projects, sometimes uh, in pairs, but oftentimes individually working with a faculty member on either a research project or engineering design project. So I'll just tell you a little bit about our uh, individual degree offerings. We have three styles of physics major uh, in the Bachelor of Science um, category, uh, physics, engineering physics, and interdisciplinary physics. And we also offer a Bachelor of Arts degree in physics. So the Bachelor of Arts degree is really the, the, the fewest required courses um, to, to obtain a, a physics degree. That makes it the most flexible, fitting in with a variety of different um, add-ons, if you would like to, or just simply focused on um, a broad training in other areas in addition to physics. The BS degree is much more in-depth um, and um, 
for physics, this is good for people really wanting to go into scientific research um, or industrial research. Um, it's an excellent preparation for graduate study in physics. Um, people use this degree to go into the field of medical physics and uh, material science, as well as other things. Engineering physics um, is um, based again on a core of physics uh, courses, but we uh, offer upper level engineering physics electives that differentiate it from the physics major. And this is good for people wanting to go directly into industry, engineering development, and it's also a great preparation for uh, graduate study in engineering fields. And our students have gone into all sorts of different engineering fields straight from John Carroll um, in, in graduate programs. Interdisciplinary physics is self-designed and very flexible. And um, this is um, a, a way to be prepared uh, for um, another field that is related to physics or perhaps a particular flavor of physics. It's also good for uh, some double majors, in particular for chemistry. Um, a lot of people are interested in learning about our three tool three to dual degree engineering program, which is a partnership between John Carroll and nearby Case Western Reserve University. It's about a 10, 15 minute drive from, from our campus. Um, it's, um, uh, you get a degree from both places. It's either a BA or a BS from John Carroll, and then um, a Bachelor of Science in Engineering from Case. The first three years are spent at John Carroll, and then the final two years will be spent at Case after which you, um, it, it, you go through a transfer process. Um, and you generally get a degree from both institutions uh, at about that five year mark. Um, in order to qualify for this program, you basically in your junior year need to have a GPA of 3.0 overall, as well as in their pre-engineering courses, which um, are math and science and some computer science um, and primarily physics, um, if one pursues a physics major, all of those are covered um, by following that physics major, um, aside from uh, one additional year course in chemistry, chemistry one and two with those labs, uh, which is not hard to do. Um, students also pursue the core curriculum at John Carroll, um, and um, you can finish that in those first three years with careful planning before uh, moving to, to Case. At Case, you would be taking just engineering courses. And, and at that point, you would choose a major in one of their specialized areas of mechanical, electrical, and so on. Um, this is a fully ABET accredited uh, program, big school of engineering, a very, very good school. And it's a very good partnership. And it's, it's a good fit for many of our students. Um, it really um, allows you to become an engineer plus. Um, you get that liberal arts broad training that we focus on at John Carroll. You um, get to be immersed in the Jesuit environment here, um, Jesuit education environment. Um, you become very well-rounded, um, highly technical, but also um, you um, are a good communicator, a good writer, um, and really able to think outside the box um, on you know, problems focusing from the ground up how to solve problems. Um, another type of dual degree offering that we have at John Carroll is a BS MBA. This is all at John Carroll. And um, this is a, also a really good option for people that really want to go into the business world, but are going to be leveraging uh, a science or physics uh, training to, to really make them high tech and make them able to communicate between the technical staff as well as the, the management staff um, at, at a company. Our interdisciplinary physics um, BS degree, um, we've actually started to differentiate different tracks that help students see where you might um, use this degree. Um, the first one is called biomedical physics. Uh, the other one is called uh, entrepreneurship physics. Um, in both of these, uh, the core is a set of physics courses um, similar to the Bachelor of Arts degree, um, but it adds cognate courses in other fields. And in the case of biomedical physics, it would be existing courses in chemistry and biology. Uh, we have a newly developed course um, called Physics in Medicine. 
Um, and so this would be a nice package for students interested in medical school, um, going into biomedical engineering from John Carroll, not necessarily uh, through CASE, but um, you know, starting at John Carroll and ending at John Carroll. And then um, uh, medical physics is another, another possibility. Entrepreneurship uh, basically adds on entrepreneurship courses um, that have specialized topics in business such as marketing, accounting, finance, um, but then also includes creativity, innovation, and idea development. And so this is a great way for students that love physics to get um, into um, high tech industry, um, maybe thinking about a startup eventually. Um, this is a really great, um, a great combination. So how does our curriculum um, work? I thought I'd try to lay this out so you can sort of see that basically everybody that starts in our major at John Carroll has the same first two years, focusing on foundational physics, lots of math, um, laboratories and electronics. Um, and then depending on which flavor you would like to major in, uh, what differentiates them primarily is the upper level electives that you would choose as well as the type of senior project you might like to have. In the case of physics uh, students, they might try to pursue um, a research project in a faculty research lab. Um, that's not the only option, but that's, that would be a great training for that. Engineering physics, um, students would be choosing um, engineering type of electives um, and then pursuing probably an engineering design project. Interdisciplinary physics, um, they still would pursue some sort of project. Um, but these would be um, these specializations would not be in our department. Um, those extra courses, those electives would be outside the department, as I described. And um, regardless of which major you choose at John Carroll, one of those Bachelor of Science degrees, or perhaps even the Bachelor of Arts degree, um, any one of those pathways, um, in the first three years can lead to the three-two engineering dual degree. Um, and for that, you would transfer to the case. Uh, Western Reserve University after the third year. Um, and um, the, the point here is that really the same start uh, for all these different avenues to pursue um, are, are, uh, are realized. So you, you, you all start here and then you can decide even later what you would like to do with, with, with that start. Some unique features about our curriculum had to do with um, the fact that we teach students right from the start in the first laboratory in general physics um, computation. Um, we use the Python environment and we, it's a special package called vPython. And what you're looking at there is um, a user or a student um, authored um, computer code that shows 3D motion of a mass on a spring. And there's a snippet of some of the code, what that looks like in, in vPython. Um, we circle back again in the curriculum as well um, into computation. Dr. Kara mentioned um, the uh, numerical physics course, which, which builds on those uh, initial skills developed in the intro labs. Um, and our department is also known for a highly experimental um, um, and hands-on applied approach. Um, we've been like that for a long time. And uh, so we, uh, everybody takes electronics, it's a required course, um, and we have a real well-developed sequence of physics labs that um, build independence and, and um, technical skills and, and oral and written communication skills throughout the curriculum, and that culminates in that senior project that I've mentioned. And if you take engineering physics elective courses, those generally have dedicated laboratory sections that go along with the lecture. So you get even more hands-on and specialized training. So what else do you do at John Carroll as a major in our department? Um, well, uh, we have a really strong uh, student group called the Society of Physics Students. Um, they've been named either a distinguished or outstanding chapter by the national office for several years now running. Um, and um, they meet every week. It's a group of maybe 10 to 15 students um, that would attend the meetings. Um, and um, it's a good time to socialize, check in, um, uh, allow the underclassmen to brush shoulders with some of the upperclassmen. And um, they plan special events, for example, outreach to local community, field trips to local industry, um, movie night. Um, they're also very active on campus. Uh, one of their favorite things to do that they're known for is preparing liquid nitrogen ice cream. 
We also offer our students the opportunity to be teaching assistants in not the physics major introductory laboratories, but in uh, the ones that are aimed at pre-health students, the pre-med students. Um, they teach alongside of a faculty member um, and, and deal with course administration and grading and answering student questions. That's a paid position and we generally have um, four to eight different students uh, involved in that throughout the year. And um, our students are active and, and, and going to national conferences, um, based, uh, you know, presenting the work that they, they conduct uh, on campus here. Um, and you can even study abroad. Um, here's um, a student who spent his summer in China. Um, and then um, that, after that summer, he, he did an academic year in Ireland before returning uh, to John Carroll to finish out his junior year. Um, so um, you don't have to be just focused on physics to succeed in our department. A little bit more about the Society of Physics students, just some pictures showing an event, um, handing out some liquid nitrogen ice cream um, and uh, outreach to a local um, Boys Hope and Girls Hope um, foundation that um, helps to mentor um, at-risk youth that have a promise for, for heading to college but just need a little bit of extra help and so our students have been involved with that. There are great research opportunities and internships. We offer research opportunities here on campus. Um, for example, last summer we had six students in paid positions uh, working in the research labs, faculty research labs. Um, this coming summer, uh, we don't know yet. Um, it's not looking good, obviously, but um, again, we, we had initially committed to six students to, to again do a variety of research projects in our labs. Um, our students also, also compete for and win um, off-campus research experiences uh, funded by the National Science Foundation. Um, and students have gone to some really good major research universities for, for, for a tremendous uh, opportunity last summer. Um, uh, a person went to the Polymer Science Program at University of Akron and they're one of the top, top places. And a couple summers ago, somebody actually went to Rome, Italy um, to work on gravitational wave physics. Um, being in Cleveland, uh, there are lots of opportunities for internships. Um, these are often facilitated by our department alums and include um, from all the way from really small companies all, all, uh, all the way up to, to big uh, places like Cleveland, Cleveland Clinic and NASA. And NASA has already uh, communicated with um, a couple of our students about opportunities this coming summer uh, should everything open back up again. The great news is that um, at least 85% of our students pr participate in one or more of these kinds of experiential learning um, opportunities. And if you add in the teaching assistant opportunities, it, it goes up from there. Here's a, just a few pictures about um, what it looks like when students are engaged in, in faculty and student scholarship and research. Um, there's a few photos from our um, um, Celebration of Scholarship, which is an annual spring event where students um, present their research in a big uh, poster session um, and students even make presentations, oral presentations at, at scientific conferences. Um, and we have a good record of getting our students published as well, um, either um, through these pr presentations or even on scientific articles um, that um, we uh, engage in uh, as faculty and uh, being the kind of institution we are, uh, we really always try to involve students in our research. This just gives you a snippet of, of some recent publications um, showing some of the applications related to magnetic resonance imaging, um, laser physics, and, um, and in my area, um, some thermal conductivity of solar cell materials. Um, it's not all work. There's some fun stuff um, and enrichment. Um, we do send students, uh, our women uh, students, to undergraduate uh, conferences um, focused on women in physics. Um, we do get visits from alums. We have a really successful alum who became a NASA, a NASA astronaut, came for a visit a uh, summer or two ago. Um, here's a quick picture of uh, service outreach that was led by uh, Dr. Bianchini, who's one of a the uh, actually a physicist Jesuit um, on campus at John Carroll. 
and we sometimes have some fun. Here's something recently from Pi Day. Dr. Kara agreed to get pied, um, and she really did get pied, uh, but it was a lot of fun. So um, what happens to our students? Um, roughly 50% go directly into the workforce, and another 50% go into graduate and professional school. Um, and um, we have a very, very good placement rate um, within uh, six to nine months of graduation, um, verging on 100%. Um, and, and last year it was 100% for a graduating class. Um, recent job titles, um, our uh, graduates get all kinds of um, jobs um, and go to different fields. Many of them though are, are in engineering type of uh, careers, um, but it's not, um, limited to that. Um, we do pe have people doing research. Um, you can hear uh, Spencer is at NASA. Um, all of these little icons around the edge are places where our um, uh, current alums are working, the ones you may have heard about, um, and then many more. Uh, for those that go directly to graduate school, they go to really good places. You can have a look at this list. Um, um, and these are just from a relatively recent um, set of graduating classes. And they, they study all sorts of things in graduate school. Um, like I said, uh, our engineering physics graduates have a really high placement rate into all sorts of engineering fields from biomedical, civil, civil electrical, materials, mechanical, and nuclear. Um, and certainly uh, a fraction of our students go to, into medic, into, uh, sorry, physics graduate programs, PhD programs. We have a number in PhD programs uh, right now, Ohio University, Case Western Reserve University, Washington University in Seattle, um, and some headed uh, this year uh, to, to physics programs. Um, we also have a number of students in medical physics careers. Um, that's a professional type of field that's not um, allopathic medicine, uh, like medical school, but um, you work in, in hospitals um, on the fancy equipment they have, like MRI and, and um, machines like that. Um, this year, we have a couple students going to MBA programs and even to law school. Um, before I, oh, I'm going to just back up. I'm sorry about that. I'm going to uh, back up for just a second and break out of this before I wrap up my portion here um, and invite our current students and alum to just say a few things about um, their experience here at John Carroll. And we'll start with Alec. Okay, so uh, hi, my name is Alec Kutras. I'm a current sophomore at John Carroll. I'm majoring, uh, pursuing a Bachelor of Science in Physics. Uh, after I graduate, I plan to go to graduate school, possibly uh, specializing in astrophysics. Uh, and I just wanted to say that um, going to John Carroll was such a good decision for me. Uh, I've always gone to really small schools. Uh, my high school graduating class is about 90 people. And uh, coming to John Carroll and having such a small class size and small intimate department with the physics department has been a really good experience. Uh, it's allowed me to get uh, to know my professors really well, to draw on their knowledge and their experience more so, uh, and just give me a better idea of what I want to do with physics and how I want to uh, pursue uh, that education going forward. Okay, thanks, Alec. Uh, Crew. Hi, everyone. My name is Crew Wenski. I'm a current senior at John Carroll University pursuing a Bachelor of Science in Physics. Um, what I've loved about the physics department is how helpful all the professors have been with those small class sizes. Um, and especially with the advising portion, I know I've changed my major a couple times. So uh, it's been nothing but support along the way. Um, after this year, I'm actually attending the University of Notre Dame for graduate school. Uh, with one of our partnerships called the Esteem Program, uh, which will focus on a mixture of engineering and also a little bit of entrepreneurship as well, so the more business side. Thank you. Thanks, Crew. Uh, and Spencer. All right. Hi. Uh, my name is Spencer Furren. Uh, I'm the alum here. I graduated with my degree in engineering physics in 2017. Uh, and now I work as an electrical engineer for NASA at the Glenn Research Center here in Cleveland. Um, so my time at John Carroll tied directly into my career. Uh, I did my senior design project on a modeling of one of the power of the power system of the main science building on John Carroll's campus. 
Uh, and now I work on computer modeling and simulation of spacecraft power systems. Uh, so that was a, a direct correlation. But I think the thing that I m appreciate most about getting my degree at John Carroll is like Dr. Dick mentioned, the, uh, the liberal arts foundation where you get not only the technical background, but the, the well-roundedness and the communication skills. So uh, in any engineering field, but particularly aerospace, you get uh, a lot of very specialized, very complicated areas that need to come together to make something work. So it's not good enough to just know what you're talking about. You have to be able to communicate that to other engineers and to managers uh, so that everybody knows what's going on, uh, even if they don't have the same level of knowledge on your particular area. So that's something that John Carroll has done really well with uh, preparing me for. Okay, thanks very much. Um, uh, we've got great students, um, great alums, um, and um, I think uh, Steve's gonna let you know or remind you about uh, the Q&A session. Uh, definitely come back if you, we're gonna have um, maybe some of these folks and maybe some others uh, there to answer any questions that you might have. Um, so um, come back for that. So as I close up here, um, I do wanna go to mentioning our departmental scholarships. Um, if you're, Thinking about coming to John Carroll, maybe you've already applied for one of these scholarships and you may have already heard from us. Um, but uh, just know that if you haven't taken the opportunity to apply, um, we um, do evaluate all of our current students as well for scholarships. And it's not unusual for a student who's, who's done well in the first year courses to uh, be offered a scholarship. We have a variety of dedicated scholarships. Many of them are for high achievement, but some are, for, are, are based only on need. Um, we have a scholarship that is, uh, goes just to female uh, physics majors or engineering physics majors. Um, and uh, as I mentioned, um, uh, these are, are really the result of alumni donations to the department. Um, and so, for example, right now we, we support at least 10 students on scholarships ranging from about 2,000 to 6,000 annually. Um, and uh, you can re read more about that by going to the JCU Physics homepage um, for more detail. And I think that that's um, all I have. Um, and I hope that that was productive for you. Um, please uh, contact me or any of the faculty if you have additional questions. Um, and uh, I'm reachable by email. Go to the homepage to find that. Um, and uh, we'd love to see you here at John Carroll in the fall. Great, thank you, Dr. Dick. I think uh, that was a very informative session. Hopefully um, it answered a lot of questions that uh, our prospective students and families may have. Uh, we invite you again at 1130 to uh, join the live Q&A and you'll have a chance to uh, ask specific questions, follow-up questions on anything you've heard uh, or things you may not have heard. Uh, if you'd like to get uh, some more information, please join us for that live session um, uh, at 11.30 again today. Um, I would like to uh, remind you to uh, be in touch with your enrollment manager who's been working with you through this process. If you have any questions on uh, the process going forward, to uh, secure your enrollment at John Carroll, which we hope you all do. And if you are ready to do that, you can uh, access your JCU Gateway portal and uh, submit your enrollment reservation form and uh, enrollment deposit there. And again, if you have any questions on that process or anything else, uh, just contact your enrollment manager. They'd be happy to assist you. And uh, I would like to thank our esteemed colleagues uh, and students and, and alums for their time today and thank all of you for joining and I think uh, I speak for everybody when I say that we definitely hope to see you on campus here um, very shortly. So take care and thank you for joining us today. Bye-bye.